Breaking news, all new buildings are going to have to have separate male and female toilet spaces, at least according to the press release on the government website and as picked up by various news companies. But if you've watched my channel long enough by now, you know that it's not quite as simple as that. It rarely is. And I suspect some people might be slightly misled by this headline, as it doesn't really give the full picture. But lucky for you, I'm going to, so let's take a closer look. Welcome back to the channel. So let's take a look first of all at how this headline uh, filtered its way across to news companies. No criticism here, Telegraph. You're taking exactly uh, what the headline gave you, which is that all new public lavatories must include a single sex male and female toilet. Um, as it says here, uh, I will link this in the description below. Um, all new public lavatories must include single-sex male and female toilets. And of course, this uh, reflects what is in the uh, news release by the government website itself. Um, this is not brand new news. This has just been published today as the result of a consultation because uh, this actually started life um, back in July 2022, as you can see here. This was the original press release to say that all buildings, all new buildings should uh, have separate male and female toilets. And this went on for a call for evidence and a consultation. And there's also a written statement um, by uh, Kemi Badenoch, which I'm going to come back to in just a moment. But let's go back to the news release itself. And let's spell out the obvious. Um, most people are going to infer from this headline that um, now all, all buildings are going to have to have separate male and female toilets. Uh, so men and women, as in biological men and women, are going to be separated because all of the news discussions about gender neutral toilets are obviously causing quite some controversy. Now, um, this is aimed as you'll see in just a moment when I go to the statement and further down this article, is aimed to eliminate the problems caused for women predominantly, um, men too, but largely women, by the provision of gender neutral toilets, which are replacing, as it seems across the country, replacing women's toilets. So in many d different examples, the men's has remained as it is, and the women's has been turned into a gender-neutral facility uh, to presumably uh, allow the company to avoid discrimination, but whilst providing a facility for trans women and trans people in general. Um, but that's been met with significant criticism. So let's look down this article itself. Government accelerates plans for separate male and female toilets in new non-domestic, private and public buildings. So let's break that down. New non-domestic, private and public buildings. So new ones. So it suggests that it's not going to apply to existing ones. As in when they are built, they are new buildings are going to have to comply with these regulations. There may be a provision that provides retrospective application, but we'll have to wait and see. It says that this builds upon action to protect and enhance single-sex spaces, which will deal with a lot of the criticism. Changes will also encourage the provision of self-contained private toilets to ensure there are appropriate facilities for all. That suggests that anyone that isn't catered for by the separate male and female provisions, that the self-contained private toilets Presumably trans people. Um, I don't know because it doesn't say. I have contacted the department uh, press office for clarification on a number of different questions, um, this being one of them, in the round at least. Uh, moving on, um, the government has announced today that it's acting to bring forward changes to regulations that will mean all new non-domestic public and private buildings will be required to provide separate single uh, sex toilets for me women and men and or self-contained private toilet as a minimum. The change comes amid dignity and privacy concerns from women and elderly people who feel they are being unfairly disadvantaged as publicly accessible toilets are increasingly being converted into gender neutral toilets. I've talked about this in a couple of videos before. Um, bearing in mind as I go through this, I'm not expressing an opinion to you. I am explaining what this article says, what the problems are, what the criticisms are, and what this is aiming to deal with, and whether or not 
in my uh, view as a lawyer, not that it's a legal opinion, my view as a lawyer as to whether this really deals with the problem or whether it seeks to avoid the problem, which is something I'm going to come back to, which I suspect is the case here, but let's reserve that until we go through. Concerns over the rise of neut uh, neutral gender facilities has meant that public have been forced to share cubicle and hand washing facilities, leading to increased waiting in shared queues, decreased choice and limitation on privacy and dignity for all. New regulations and guidance will mean women, who may need to use the facilities more often because of pregnancy and sanitary needs, uh, will now be guaranteed appropriate facilities either through a separate single sex space or a self-contained private toilet. The action taken today builds on the government's commitment to a wider approach to protection of single-sex spaces, in addition to single-sex toilets becoming the default and minimum for new non-residential buildings and uh, places undertaking major refurbishment. So if places go through a major refurbishment, then they must comply as well. The guidelines will encourage... Um, I understood that they're going to be regulations, but it says the guidelines will encourage the consideration of self-contained toilets. So there might be guidelines to accompany the regulations. So the guidelines might be, if you can't do this, then do that instead, which are fully enclosed uh, toilet room with a wash hand basin for individual use. This new approach will help to maximise privacy and dignity for all, which will be explicit in the guidance. Um, and then a new uh, short technical consultation to shape the changes will open tomorrow. So following the call for evidence from 2022 and so on. Um, the Minister for Women and Equalities said, I'll come back to the full statement in a moment, it is important that everybody has privacy and dignity when using public facilities, yet the move towards gender neutral toilets has removed this fundamental right for women and girls. These proposals will ensure every uh, new building in England, so it applies to England only, is required to provide separate male and female or unisex facilities and publish uh, guidance to explain the difference, protecting the dignity, privacy and safety for all. Um, uh, moving on, another statement, it's extremely important women can feel comfortable when using public facilities, so we are taking action to restore dignity and privacy at the centre for, for all future provision. These proposals will mean separate toilets for men and women, as well as self-contained toilets for those that need them, because they uh, become a requirement for every new building across England. I don't know why it's only England, but um, it, it is uh, from what I can see at the moment. A previous call for evidence, that's what I referred to a moment ago, uh, on increasing accessibility of toilets for men and women gathered over 17,000 responses and represented a full range of views, uh, generally calling for greater consideration in the range of toilets to preserve dignity, access, e uh, equality and privacy for all. Uh, almost there. I want you to have the full um, article here so as not to um, have any missed out. Uh, the changes will be made through building regulations and guidance. The aim of the new requirements is, uh, will ensure uh, separate single-sex toilet facilities are provided for men and women and or self-contained. Uh, Mixed-sex uh, mix shared facilities are not an option except when lack of space only allows for a single toilet. Changing the rules for single sex and or universal toilet to be required would have a positive equality outcome for those who may not currently uh, feel safe when using toilet facilities. Uh, there's further information, etc., etc. Applies to England only, uh, impact on new buildings, etc. But the one thing that I think is missing from this document, whilst it might be implicit in what's said, in my view, what is missing is whether this refers to biological women and biological men to use those separate women's and men's facilities. If, to be fair, if we go to the full statement from Camille Badenoch, I've highlighted the, the relevant bit here, which is such gender neutral toilets take uh, place women at significant disadvantage, while men can then use both cubicles and urinals, women can only use the former. The net effect is actually to reduce toilet provision for women, which is something that I've said before. I think it is um, discriminatory against women to replace them with uh, gender neutral toilets, whereas the men stays as it is. The statement goes on, women also need safe spaces given their particular biological health and sanitary needs. And concluding, women are also likely to feel less comfortable using mixed sex facilities. 
And so this whole statement here is quite clearly driven by the biological needs for women to have separate women's spaces. But I maintain that businesses are going to remain confused about certain aspects about, for example, trans women using women's facilities, because it's somewhat silent on that. It would seem that this is specifically targeting the gender neutral replacement of women's facilities and nothing more. But then we move back to the question, is this really uh, protecting the, the true biological single sex space? Or is it just eradicating this sort of option for businesses to attempt to comply with the Equality Act so as not to uh, discriminate against trans persons, but at the same time not upset women. So if they were to turn a women's into a gender neutral bathroom, then suddenly on one construction of the argument, there's no problem because it's a gender neutral facility. And so that's then one way of neutralizing the argument, no pun intended. But the provision of gender neutral toilets has obviously been met with significant criticism. I've done videos on this before where the men's remained as it is, the women's was turned into gender neutral, almost so as to remove the argument and the criticism that, to be blunt about it, trans women were using women's facilities, and some women were saying that they were upset by that. The company, the business, then just turned that into a gender neutral facility, almost like that eradicated the problem. But in my respectful view, that doesn't eradicate the problem. It simply masks the problem. But when we move to this guidance here, many of you will look at this headline, and see all new lavatories must include single sex male and female toilets. Many of you will think, I suspect, let me know in the comments what you think, I suspect that you will think that this is now the government stepping in and making sure that this isn't happening and protecting women's spaces. But this article is silent on whether or not it is referring to biological women using the women's facilities. And therefore, in my view, there will be ongoing criticism and nervousness by companies as to how to follow the rules and how to comply with the Equality Act. Now, whether those arguments are right or wrong, whether those criticisms are right or wrong, those criticisms exist. Many people express those views. Many people express those criticisms. This is something that many people are afraid to say or simply not saying and sometimes missing the point. Or sometimes, as in the case of converting women's facilities into gender neutral facilities, trying to provide a solution to the criticism whilst complying with the rules and creating a different problem in itself. So whilst this guidance is, and these regulations are there to tackle this problem of the conversion of women's facilities into gender neutral facilities, um, I do feel that there needs to be an answer to the question specifically as to whether or not this is intended and will be applied in the sense of biological women or whether it is specifically targeting the conversion of those facilities into gender neutral facilities. So as I said, not quite as straightforward as it might first have seemed from that headline. So if you see that headline, as I often say in my videos, you do need to read the article. You do need to consider the wider implications you can't just see a headline and draw a conclusion, uh, much less make a comment based on that headline. Um, I've been caught out by now by seeing a headline and commenting underneath and then realize that there's more to it underneath. So I avoid doing that because there is very often more to it. Uh, there is uh, always more than one side to a story. Sometimes there are 40 or 50 different sides to a story. In fact, brief story before I let you go, when I was first going to do work experience, I did what I now know to be a mini pupillage, which is going to shadow a barrister for a week or two. And they said to me, how many sides to a story are there? And I said, at least two, um, meaning that, you know, there's always two sides to a story. And I'm thinking there might be more. Uh, he put down a stack of papers, which was 50 five zero witness statements, all witnessing this one big fight outside a pub in Birmingham. There were, as I learned that day, at least 50 sides to the same story. Some people even had the, the perpetrators the wrong way around. Some people had the victims the wrong way around. 
some people's descriptions of who it was that was doing these things were completely almost made up and didn't resemble anything like each other. Totally different colour clothing, totally different positions, everything. So there are many different sides to a story. So when you see a headline like this, it's not quite as straightforward as it seems. I've emailed the department for a clarification on that question. I suspect it is just the um, reversal of the conversion of women's facilities into gender neutral facilities, which for what it's worth, I think is a positive step in the right direction. Because as I've said in previous videos, I do think it's discriminatory. I'll link the video where I think I said that before in the description below. And that has to be a positive thing. But I don't think it's going to stem all of the criticism and it's certainly not going to stem all of the problems. And it's certainly not going to stem and cure the confusion that many businesses are going to face. Even the large businesses will come up against lawyers who say this is not entirely clear cut. So stay tuned. I will let you know if they come back and answer my question and I will let you know what happens with these regulations and uh, how they will be applied. In the meantime, please do remember to like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.